Welcome, everyone, to Book Elixir. Today, we're diving a summary of The 33 Strategies of War by Robert Greene. Introduction The 33 Strategies of War by Robert Greene presents a captivating exploration of timeless principles and strategies derived from the battlefield and applied to the intricacies of life. This book serves as an invaluable guide, drawing on historical examples and military campaigns to provide a comprehensive understanding of strategic thinking. Green skillfully delves into the complexities of warfare, both on an individual and organizational level, weaving together narratives of triumph and defeat to extract invaluable lessons. The introduction sets the stage for a transformative journey into self-awareness, leadership, defense, offense, and the power of unpredictability. Green challenges readers to confront their own nature, motivations, and tendencies, encouraging deep reflection on personal strengths and weaknesses. As the book progresses, it unveils a rich tapestry of strategies, each supported by historical anecdotes that shed light on the dynamics of power, conflict, and achievement. Through engaging prose and thought provoking insights, Green invites readers to transcend the literal interpretation of war emphasizing the broader application of strategic thinking in everyday life. Whether facing personal challenges, leading a team, or confronting adversaries, the 33 Strategies of War offers a comprehensive toolkit for those seeking to understand and master the art of strategy. As readers embark on this intellectual expedition, they are encouraged to explore the depths of their own character and embrace the strategic mindset necessary for success in the complex and competitive arenas of life. Robert Greene crafted the 33 Strategies of War with meticulous research, drawing inspiration from historical accounts, military campaigns, and the strategies of influential figures throughout time. Renowned for his keen understanding of human behavior and power dynamics, Greene delves into the intricate fabric of warfare, dissecting both the triumphs and failures of strategic minds. His writing style blends storytelling with profound insights, making complex historical concepts accessible to a broad audience. Green's method involves distilling the essence of successful strategies and presenting them in a format that resonates with readers, creating a comprehensive guide that transcends the realms of traditional warfare to provide valuable lessons applicable to various aspects of life. In this book, Green not only explores the strategies that shaped history but offers a timeless manual for navigating the complexities of conflicts and competition in contemporary society. Chapter 1 – The Polarity Strategy In the first chapter of The 33 Strategies of War by Robert Green, titled The Polarity Strategy, Navigating Dualities, Green presents the key idea of embracing and navigating the dual nature present in both situations and individuals. Through historical illustrations involving figures like Abraham Lincoln and Winston Churchill, who effectively handled conflicting forces in their strategic decision-making, Green stresses the significance of avoiding rigid thinking and promoting adaptability to changing circumstances. The chapter delves into practical applications of the polarity strategy, urging readers to acknowledge and value opposing forces rather than perceiving them as hindrances. Through the use of visual metaphors, contemporary examples, and stimulating questions, the concept of finding balance in dualities is reinforced, establishing a solid groundwork for comprehending strategic thinking amidst conflicting pressures. Chapter 2, The Guile and Deception Strategy, Certainly. In Chapter 2 of The 33 Strategies of War by Robert Greene, titled The Guile and Deception Strategy, Greene explores the concept of using guile and deception as strategic tools in various situations. The chapter draws on historical examples to illustrate how successful leaders and strategists employed cunning tactics to outmaneuver their opponents. Green emphasizes the idea that deception is a crucial aspect of warfare and strategic thinking, allowing individuals to mislead and confuse adversaries. Practical advice is provided on how to incorporate guile and deception into one's approach 
with a focus on careful planning and execution. The chapter serves as a guide for readers to understand the power of strategic deception and how it can be applied to gain a competitive advantage in different contexts. Chapter 3 He Death Ground Strategy, Certainly In Chapter 3 of the book, The 33 Strategies of War, written by Robert Greene, titled, The Death Ground Strategy, Green introduces the concept of confronting situations with no way out, where retreat is not a viable choice. This strategy is based on the notion that when individuals find themselves in desperate or seemingly hopeless circumstances, they can tap into extraordinary levels of determination and resourcefulness. The chapter delves into historical instances where leaders and warriors, when faced with a scenario where there is no escape, displayed remarkable courage and innovation. Green explores how these individuals transform desperation into a potent force for survival and achievement. Practical insights are provided on how to apply the death ground strategy in modern-day situations, highlighting the significance of finding motivation and strength in seemingly dire circumstances. The chapter encourages readers to confront challenges directly, utilizing adversity as a catalyst for exceptional performance and strategic thinking. Overall, Chapter 3 serves as a guide for comprehending the mindset necessary to navigate seemingly impossible situations and convert them into opportunities for personal and strategic growth. Chapter 4 The Guerrilla War Strategy, Certainly in the fourth chapter of Robert Greene's book, The 33 Strategies of War, titled, The Guerrilla War Strategy, the author delves into the concept of utilizing unconventional tactics and strategies to outmaneuver stronger adversaries. Drawing inspiration from guerrilla warfare, where smaller, agile forces employ surprise, mobility, and unconventional methods to combat larger, more conventional armies, Green provides historical examples of leaders and military figures who successfully employed these tactics. This chapter highlights the significance of flexibility, adaptability, and creativity when faced with adversity. The book offers practical advice on how to apply the guerrilla war strategy in various aspects of life. Encouraging readers to think innovatively, exploit their opponents' weaknesses, and employ unexpected approaches to achieve success. In summary, Chapter 4 acts as a guide, illustrating the strategic advantages of adopting a guerrilla mindset. It demonstrates that unconventional methods can serve as powerful tools in navigating diverse challenges and conflicts. Chapter 5 The Chain Reaction Strategy, Certainly in the fifth chapter of Robert Greene's book, The 33 Strategies of War, titled, The Chain Reaction Strategy, the author delves into the concept of creating situations that initiate a series of events in one's favor, resulting in a chain reaction. This chapter highlights the significance of strategic maneuvers that lead to a cascade of positive outcomes. Green utilizes historical examples to illustrate how leaders and strategists orchestrated events to trigger chain reactions, gaining momentum and an advantageous position. The underlying idea is to comprehend the interconnected nature of events and utilize them to accomplish strategic objectives. The chapter offers practical insights on how to implement the chain reaction strategy in various scenarios. Readers are encouraged to identify crucial leverage points and make calculated moves that will initiate a sequence of favorable events. In essence, Chapter 5 acts as a comprehensive guide for comprehending the cause and effect dynamics in strategic thinking, empowering individuals to initiate and capitalize on chain reactions that work to their advantage in different aspects of life. Chapter 6 The Deflection Strategy, Certainly In Chapter 6 of the book, The 33 Strategies of War, by Robert Greene, 
Titled The Deflection Strategy, the author delves into the concept of shifting the focus and attention of adversaries, thereby creating opportunities for oneself. This chapter underscores the importance of diverting attention from one's weaknesses towards areas that align with one's strategic goals. Green uses historical instances to demonstrate how adept leaders and strategists have effectively utilized the deflection strategy to deceive and capitalize on openings. The key is to influence perceptions, steering others' focus away from vulnerabilities. The chapter offers practical guidance on implementing the deflection strategy in diverse scenarios. Readers are urged to hone the skill of redirecting attention, causing confusion among rivals and gaining strategic benefits. In essence, Chapter 6 acts as a manual for comprehending the potency of misdirection and strategic redirection, empowering individuals to shape narratives and manipulate perceptions to their advantage across various settings. Chapter 7 The Retreat and Surrender Strategy, Certainly in Chapter 7 of The 33 Strategies of War by Robert Greene, titled The Retreat and Surrender Strategy, Greene delves into the concept of strategically selecting battles and, on occasion, withdrawing to attain a more advantageous position in the future. The chapter highlights the significance of discernment in determining when to engage in conflict and when to step back. Green utilizes historical examples to illustrate how successful leaders and military commanders have employed strategic retreats. The objective is to avoid unnecessary conflicts and conserve resources for more favorable circumstances. The chapter offers practical insights on how to implement the retreat and surrender strategy in different scenarios. Readers are encouraged to appreciate the value of strategic withdrawals, perceiving them not as signs of weakness but as calculated maneuvers to secure a superior position. Overall, Chapter 7 acts as a manual for comprehending the wisdom in selectively choosing battles, recognizing the appropriate time to retreat, and strategically surrendering to pave the way for future triumphs. Chapter 8 The Counterbalance Strategy In Chapter 8 of the book, The 33 Strategies of War, by Robert Greene, titled The Counterbalance Strategy, Greene delves into the concept of counterbalancing weaknesses with strengths across different domains to establish equilibrium. The chapter underscores the significance of utilizing contrasting forces to attain balance and surmount obstacles. Green utilizes historical instances to demonstrate how effective leaders strategically melded opposing elements to counterbalance their weaknesses. The central theme revolves around creating a harmonious equilibrium that enhances overall effectiveness. The chapter offers practical guidance on implementing the counterbalance strategy in diverse scenarios. Readers are urged to evaluate their strengths and weaknesses impartially while seeking complementary skills or resources to develop a well-rounded and potent strategic approach. In essence, Chapter 8 acts as a manual for recognizing the value of balancing conflicting forces, enabling individuals to navigate challenges with a strategic and harmonious outlook. Chapter 9 The Center of Gravity Strategy, Certainly in Chapter 9 of The 33 Strategies of War by Robert Greene, titled The Center of Gravity Strategy, Greene delves into the concept of identifying and undermining the most crucial aspect of an opponent's strategy. By doing so, he aims to weaken them significantly. The chapter highlights the significance of comprehending where an adversary's strength lies and strategically focusing on that core element. Green provides historical examples to illustrate how successful leaders and military strategists identified and attacked the center of gravity of their opponents. The objective is to strike at the very heart of the opposition. Causing maximum disruption, the chapter also offers practical insights on how to implement the center of gravity strategy in different scenarios. 
Readers are encouraged to critically analyze their opponents, identifying the key elements that sustain their strength, and strategically targeting those vulnerable points. Overall, Chapter 9 acts as a guide for comprehending the strategic importance of recognizing and targeting the center of gravity in conflicts. This understanding empowers individuals to effectively weaken their opponents. Chapter 10 The Counterattack Strategy, Certainly. In Chapter 10 of The 33 Strategies of War by Robert Greene, titled The Counterattack Strategy, Greene delves into the concept of absorbing an enemy's attack and responding with a forceful counterstrike. This chapter highlights the significance of resilience, patience, and strategic timing when faced with adversity. Green utilizes historical examples to illustrate how successful leaders and military commanders strategically absorbed enemy attacks, maintaining composure before launching a counterattack that overwhelmed their adversaries. The objective is to reverse the situation by absorbing and redirecting the enemy's force. The chapter offers practical advice on implementing the counterattack strategy in various scenarios. Readers are encouraged to cultivate mental and emotional resilience, viewing setbacks as opportunities to gather strength for a decisive response. In essence, Chapter 10 serves as a comprehensive guide, enabling individuals to comprehend the strategic importance of absorbing attacks strategically and responding with a potent and well-timed counterattack. This approach allows one to transform adversity into an opportunity for victory. Chapter 11 The Strategic Withdrawal Strategy, Certainly In Chapter 11 of The 33 Strategies of War by Robert Greene, titled The Strategic Withdrawal Strategy, Greene delves into the concept of strategically withdrawing to evade disastrous consequences and regroup for future triumphs. The chapter highlights the significance of discernment and foresight in selecting battles, Green utilizes historical examples to demonstrate how accomplished leaders and military commanders strategically withdrew from conflicts, safeguarding their resources and positioning themselves for future accomplishments. The objective is to avoid unnecessary engagements that could result in long-term harm. Practical insights are provided on how to implement the strategic withdrawal strategy in various scenarios. Readers are urged to recognize when the costs of a specific battle outweigh the potential benefits and to strategically withdraw for a stronger future position. Overall, Chapter 11 acts as a manual for comprehending the wisdom behind selective retreats, showcasing the strategic importance of preserving resources and regrouping for future victories. Chapter 12 The Chain of Blows Strategy, Certainly. In Chapter 12 of the book, The 33 Strategies of War, written by Robert Greene, titled, The Chain of Blows Strategy, Greene delves into the concept of gradually weakening an opponent by unleashing a series of well-planned strikes. The chapter highlights the significance of delivering impactful blows repeatedly to exhaust and demoralize the adversary. Greene supports his ideas by drawing upon historical examples, demonstrating how successful leaders and military strategists effectively employed the chain of blows strategy. They strategically applied pressure to their opponents over time, aiming to create cumulative effects that would ultimately provide them with a strategic advantage. The chapter also offers practical advice on how to implement the chain of blows strategy in different scenarios. Readers are encouraged to carefully plan and execute a sequence of moves that would progressively diminish the strength and determination of their opponents. In essence, Chapter 12 serves as a comprehensive guide, enabling readers to comprehend the tactical importance of delivering a series of calculated blows. It showcases the strategic power of persistence and the cumulative impact it can have in various arenas of conflict. 
Chapter 13 The Annihilation Strategy, Certainly In Chapter 13 of The 33 Strategies of War by Robert Greene, titled The Annihilation Strategy, Green delves into the concept of overpowering an opponent through an unrelenting and definitive assault, leaving no opportunity for recovery. The chapter highlights the significance of attaining absolute and conclusive triumphs from a strategic standpoint. Green utilizes historical instances to exemplify how accomplished leaders and military commanders executed the annihilation strategy employing tactics that left their adversaries without any means of escape or recuperation. The objective is to crush the enemy with an overpowering display of force and intensity. The chapter also offers practical insights on how to implement the annihilation strategy in various scenarios. Readers are encouraged to recognize moments when a decisive and overwhelming attack can result in complete victory and strategic superiority. In essence, Chapter 13 serves as a manual for comprehending the tactical importance of executing an annihilation-style assault, showcasing the strategic potency of decisiveness and intensity in achieving absolute triumph. Chapter 14 The Fate Accompli Strategy, Certainly In Chapter 14 of The 33 Strategies of War, by Robert Greene, titled The Fate Accompli Strategy, Greene delves into the concept of presenting actions as a fate accompli, thereby making it arduous for adversaries to resist or counteract. The chapter underscores the strategic advantage of creating a scenario where the outcome seems unavoidable. Green draws upon historical instances to exemplify how accomplished leaders and strategists implemented the fait accompli strategy, undertaking actions that left opponents with limited choices and minimal scope for effective opposition. The objective is to mold perceptions and circumstances in a manner that renders reversal challenging. Practical guidance is offered on how to employ the fait accompli strategy in diverse situations. Readers are encouraged to grasp the psychological impact of portraying a situation as already achieved and to strategically position themselves for triumph. All in all, Chapter 14 serves as a manual for comprehending the psychological and strategic ramifications of the fait accompli strategy demonstrating how the perception of inevitability can wield significant influence in various arenas of conflict. Chapter 15 The Lightning War Strategy, Certainly In the 15th chapter of Robert Greene's book, The 33 Strategies of War, titled The Lightning War Strategy, the author delves into the concept of utilizing speed and surprise to catch adversaries off guard and achieve swift victories. This chapter highlights the strategic benefits of taking rapid and unforeseen actions. Green supports his ideas by drawing upon historical examples, demonstrating how successful leaders and military commanders have employed the lightning war strategy through quick and unpredictable movements to gain the upper hand. The objective is to leverage the element of surprise and exploit opponents' weaknesses before they can effectively respond. The chapter also offers practical insights on applying the lightning war strategy in different scenarios. Readers are encouraged to recognize the importance of speed, surprise, and the ability to disrupt opponents' plans through prompt and decisive actions. In summary, Chapter 15 serves as a valuable guide for comprehending the tactical significance of speed and surprise in warfare and strategic thinking. It showcases the potency of swift and unexpected maneuvers in attaining a strategic advantage. Chapter 16 The Decoy Strategy, Version 1, Indeed in the 16th chapter of The 33 Strategies of War, by Robert Greene, titled The Decoy Strategy, Greene delves into the concept of utilizing decoys and distractions to deceive opponents and secure a strategic edge. 
The chapter underscores the significance of crafting diversions to influence perceptions and behaviors. Green references historical instances to demonstrate how effective leaders and military tacticians implemented the decoy strategy, employing false information, bait, or distractions to bewilder and redirect the focus of their enemies. The objective is to lure opponents into errors or miscalculations. Practical guidance is offered on implementing the decoy strategy in diverse scenarios. Readers are urged to grasp the psychological impact of decoys, distractions, and misdirection, strategically utilizing them to shape the narrative and create opportunities for triumph. In essence, Chapter 16 acts as a manual for comprehending the tactical value of decoy strategies, illustrating how the manipulation of attention and perception can serve as a potent weapon in various realms of conflict and rivalry. Chapter 17 The Divide and Conquer Strategy Chapter 17 of The 33 Strategies of War by Robert Greene, titled The Divide and Conquer Strategy, Greene delves into the concept of instigating divisions among adversaries, pitting them against each other. The chapter underscores the strategic benefit of leveraging internal conflicts to undermine the collective strength of the opposition. Green references historical instances to demonstrate how effective leaders and military tacticians implemented the divide-and-conquer strategy, skillfully fostering discord among their foes. The key is to pinpoint existing rifts or create fractures within the enemy ranks, thereby eroding their cohesion and power. The chapter offers practical advice on implementing the divide-and-conquer strategy in diverse scenarios. Readers are urged to grasp the intricacies of their adversaries' alliances and connections, employing strategic maneuvers to sow discord and capitalize on vulnerabilities. In essence, Chapter 17 acts as a manual for recognizing the tactical significance of fostering divisions among adversaries illustrating how internal conflicts can be strategically utilized to secure a substantial edge in various arenas of conflict and rivalry. Chapter 18 The Passive Aggression Strategy In Chapter 18 of The 33 Strategies of War by Robert Greene, titled The Passive Aggression Strategy, the author delves into the concept of subtly undermining opponents to weaken them without direct confrontation. Historical examples are used to demonstrate how successful leaders and military strategists have employed this strategy to erode the morale, resources, or support of their adversaries over time. Practical advice is also given on how to implement the passive aggression strategy effectively in different scenarios, emphasizing the importance of understanding psychological and indirect methods to achieve strategic goals. This chapter serves as a valuable resource for comprehending the significance of passive-aggressive tactics in weakening opponents strategically in various areas of conflict and competition. Chapter 19 The Chain of Command Strategy, Certainly in Chapter 19 of the book, The 33 Strategies of War, by Robert Greene, titled, The Chain of Command Strategy, the author delves into the concept of identifying and capitalizing on the vulnerabilities present in an adversary's hierarchy and decision-making framework. The chapter underscores the importance of targeting key individuals and exploiting weaknesses within the chain of command. Green utilizes historical instances to demonstrate how effective leaders and military strategists implemented the chain of command strategy by disrupting communication channels, leveraging internal rivalries, and focusing on pivotal figures within the hierarchy. The primary goal is to sow discord and uncertainty within the leadership structure of the opponent, the chapter offers practical advice on implementing the chain of command strategy in diverse scenarios. Readers are urged to scrutinize the hierarchy in decision-making mechanisms of their adversaries, pinpointing crucial figures and vulnerabilities to gain a strategic edge. 
in essence, Chapter 19 acts as a manual for comprehending the strategic significance of targeting an adversary's chain of command, illustrating how disruptions in leadership can result in strategic benefits across various arenas of conflict and rivalry. Chapter 20 The Stratagem Strategy, Certainly in Chapter 20 of the book, The 33 Strategies of War, written by Robert Greene, titled The Stratagem Strategy, Greene delves into the concept of utilizing strategic tactics and traps to outwit adversaries. The chapter highlights the significance of craftiness and deceit in attaining a tactical edge. Green utilizes historical instances to demonstrate how accomplished leaders and military strategists implemented the stratagem strategy, employing cunning maneuvers, deceptive tactics, and strategic trickery to bewilder and outmaneuver their foes. The objective is to create circumstances where opponents unknowingly fall into traps or commit errors. Practical guidance is offered on how to effectively employ the stratagem strategy in diverse scenarios. Readers are encouraged to think innovatively, utilizing clever stratagems to exploit the psychological weaknesses of opponents and gain a strategic advantage. In essence, Chapter 20 serves as a manual for comprehending the tactical significance of employing shrewd and deceptive strategies, showcasing how the utilization of stratagems can be a potent tool in various realms of conflict and competition. Chapter 21 The Disinformation Strategy, Version 1, Indeed In Chapter 21 of the book, The 33 Strategies of War, by Robert Greene, titled, The Disinformation Strategy, Green delves into the concept of spreading false information to confuse and disrupt opponents' plans. The chapter highlights the strategic advantage of controlling the flow of information and shaping perceptions. Green uses historical examples to demonstrate how successful leaders and military commanders implemented the disinformation strategy, utilizing misinformation, propaganda, and psychological operations to deceive adversaries. The goal is to induce confusion, instill doubt, and interfere with the decision-making processes of opponents. The chapter offers practical insights on applying the disinformation strategy in different scenarios, urging readers to recognize the influence of controlling narratives, strategically disseminating disinformation, and leveraging information as a means to gain a psychological edge. In essence, Chapter 21 acts as a manual for comprehending the tactical significance of manipulating information and spreading disinformation, illustrating how the strategic deployment of misinformation can be a powerful tool in various arenas of conflict and rivalry. Chapter 22 The Distraction Strategy in Chapter 22 of The 33 Strategies of War, by Robert Greene, titled The Distraction Strategy, the author delves into the concept of diverting attention from one's true intentions to create opportunities amidst confusion. Greene highlights the strategic advantage of utilizing distractions to mislead and open up possibilities, Historical anecdotes are employed by Green to demonstrate how effective leaders and military tacticians implemented the distraction strategy, employing well-thought-out diversions to bewilder and disrupt their adversaries. The core idea is to sow disorder and capitalize on the ensuing chances that emerge from the chaos. The chapter offers practical guidance on implementing the distraction strategy in diverse scenarios. Readers are urged to hone their skills in the art of diversion, strategically using distractions to steer the narrative, manipulate perceptions, and engineer favorable circumstances. In essence, Chapter 22 acts as a manual for grasping the tactical significance of employing distractions to mislead opponents, illustrating how the strategic deployment of diversion can serve as a potent instrument in various realms of conflict and rivalry. Chapter 23 The Hidden Effort Strategy, 
certainly. In Chapter 23 of the book, The 33 Strategies of War, by Robert Greene, titled, The Hidden Effort Strategy, Greene delves into the idea of concealing one's true efforts until the last moment to catch opponents off guard. The chapter highlights the advantage of maintaining an aura of mystery and unpredictability, Green uses historical anecdotes to demonstrate how successful leaders and military commanders employed the hidden effort strategy by intentionally hiding their intentions, plans, or strengths until the right moment. The goal is to keep adversaries uncertain and deliver surprises with well-timed revelations. The chapter offers practical advice on implementing the hidden effort strategy in different scenarios. Readers are urged to become adept at strategic concealment, keeping their true capabilities under wraps until the critical juncture. In essence, Chapter 23 acts as a manual for grasping the strategic significance of concealed efforts, illustrating how leveraging mystery and unpredictability can be a powerful asset in various arenas of conflict and rivalry. Chapter 24 The Total War Strategy, Certainly In Chapter 24 of The 33 Strategies of War, by Robert Greene, titled The Total War Strategy, Greene delves into the concept of complete dedication to the conflict, leaving no room for compromise or negotiation. The chapter highlights the strategic advantage of embracing a mindset of unwavering commitment in order to achieve decisive victories. Green utilizes historical examples to illustrate how successful leaders and military strategists implemented the total war strategy, showcasing the effectiveness of wholehearted devotion and relentless pursuit of objectives. The objective is to eradicate any middle ground, compelling adversaries to confront the full force of one's endeavors. Practical guidance is offered on how to apply the total war strategy in different scenarios. Readers are encouraged to adopt a mindset of resolute commitment, eliminating any possibility of compromise, and approaching conflicts with an all-or-nothing mentality. Overall, Chapter 24 serves as a manual for comprehending the tactical significance of total commitment, demonstrating how the strategic utilization of an unwavering approach can serve as a formidable tool in various realms of conflict and competition. Chapter 25 The Defensive War Strategy, Certainly In Chapter 25 of The 33 Strategies of War, by Robert Greene, titled The Defensive War Strategy, Greene delves into the concept of utilizing defensive tactics to exhaust adversaries and pave the way for counterattacks. The chapter highlights the strategic benefits of adopting a defensive stance when necessary. Greene draws upon historical instances to exemplify how accomplished leaders and military commanders executed the defensive war strategy demonstrating the art of absorbing enemy assaults and employing defensive maneuvers to deplete their strength. The objective is to transform defense into a strategic advantage. The chapter offers practical insights on implementing the defensive war strategy in diverse scenarios. Readers are encouraged to grasp the significance of patience, endurance, and strategic defense, employing defensive postures to gradually wear down opponents and create opportunities for counterattacks. Overall, Chapter 25 serves as a comprehensive guide for comprehending the tactical significance of defensive strategies, showcasing how the strategic utilization of defense can serve as a potent tool in various domains of conflict and competition. Chapter 26 The Unpredictability Strategy, Certainly In Chapter 26 of the book, The 33 Strategies of War, written by Robert Greene, the author delves into the concept of embracing unpredictability as a means to unsettle opponents and prevent them from anticipating your actions. This chapter highlights the strategic benefits of cultivating an air of unpredictability, Green supports his arguments by drawing upon historical examples, 
demonstrating how successful leaders and military commanders effectively employed the unpredictability strategy. They intentionally adopted unconventional tactics and behaviors to perplex their adversaries. The objective is to create confusion, disrupt established patterns, and maintain an element of mystery. The chapter also offers practical advice on how to implement the unpredictability strategy in different scenarios. Readers are encouraged to embrace spontaneity, unpredictability, and adaptability, utilizing these qualities strategically to disorient opponents and gain a psychological edge. In summary, Chapter 26 serves as a comprehensive guide, shedding light on the tactical significance of unpredictability. It showcases how the strategic use of surprise and unorthodox approaches can serve as powerful tools in various domains of conflict and competition. Chapter 27 The Counterbalance Strategy, Indeed In Chapter 27 of the book, The 33 Strategies of War, by Robert Greene, titled, The Counterbalance Strategy, Green delves into the concept of balancing aggression with restraint and adjusting one's approach according to the circumstances. The chapter highlights the strategic advantage of modifying the intensity of one's actions to maintain equilibrium. Green uses historical examples to demonstrate how effective leaders and military commanders implemented the counterbalance strategy, knowing when to be assertive and when to hold back. The key is to steer clear of extremes, be flexible in response to the situation, and maintain a well-rounded and adaptable strategy. The chapter offers practical advice on applying the counterbalance strategy in different scenarios. Readers are urged to recognize the significance of adapting their tactics based on the situation, avoiding rigid thinking, and striking the right balance between aggression and restraint. In essence, Chapter 27 acts as a manual for grasping the strategic value of counterbalancing actions, illustrating how the judicious use of moderation and flexibility can serve as a potent weapon in various arenas of conflict and rivalry. Chapter 28 The Economy of Force Strategy, Certainly In Chapter 28 of The 33 Strategies of War, by Robert Greene, titled, The Grand Strategy, Greene delves into the concept of embracing a far-reaching strategy that influences and shapes all other actions. The chapter highlights the significance of possessing a holistic vision that aligns with ultimate objectives. Greene utilizes historical examples to demonstrate how accomplished leaders and military strategists implemented the Grand Strategy underscoring the effectiveness of having a clear and all-encompassing plan that governs tactical decisions. The aim is to establish a guiding principle that informs every move and choice. Practical guidance is offered on how to formulate a grand strategy in different scenarios. Readers are encouraged to envision their ultimate goals, devise a comprehensive plan, and utilize it as a guiding force to navigate through various conflicts and challenges. In essence, Chapter 28 serves as a manual for comprehending the tactical importance of a grand strategy, illustrating how a long-term vision and overarching plan can serve as a potent tool in diverse realms of conflict and competition. Chapter 29 The Maneuvering Strategy in Chapter 29 of The 33 Strategies of War, by Robert Greene, titled The Chain Reaction Strategy, Greene delves into the concept of starting a series of actions that trigger a chain reaction, leading to a cascade of events that work to one's advantage. The chapter highlights the strategic benefit of initiating a sequence of interconnected actions, Green uses historical instances to demonstrate how effective leaders and military commanders implemented the chain reaction strategy, highlighting the impact of initiating a chain of events that build momentum and strategic advantage. The goal is to create a ripple effect that culminates in a positive result. 
The chapter offers practical advice on applying the chain reaction strategy in different scenarios. Readers are urged to pinpoint crucial leverage points, strategically kickstart actions, and make the most of the ensuing chain of events. In essence, Chapter 29 acts as a manual for grasping the tactical significance of starting chain reactions, illustrating how the strategic deployment of interlinked actions can serve as a potent tool in various arenas of conflict and rivalry. Chapter 30 The Exploitation of Opportunities Strategy, Certainly In Chapter 30 of The 33 Strategies of War by Robert Greene, titled The Weakness Strategy, the author delves into the concept of exploiting an opponent's vulnerabilities to gain a strategic advantage. Green uses historical examples to demonstrate how successful leaders and military strategists have implemented this strategy, highlighting the significance of identifying and capitalizing on the weaknesses of adversaries. By focusing on areas of weakness, individuals can create opportunities for strategic maneuvers. The chapter offers practical advice on how to effectively apply the weakness strategy in different scenarios. Urging readers to thoroughly assess opponents, pinpoint weaknesses, and strategically exploit them to secure an advantage, Chapter 30 acts as a manual for recognizing the tactical value of exploiting weaknesses, illustrating how targeting vulnerabilities can serve as a potent tool in various conflicts and competitions. Chapter 31 The Disproportionality Strategy In Chapter 31 of The 33 Strategies of War by Robert Greene, titled The Chain of Blows Strategy, Green delves into the concept of strategically delivering a series of impactful blows to gradually weaken an opponent. The chapter highlights the advantage of applying sustained pressure to diminish an adversary's strength over time. Green uses historical examples to demonstrate how successful leaders and military commanders implemented the chain of blows strategy illustrating the effectiveness of executing a sequence of well-timed actions to wear down opponents. The goal is to create a cumulative impact that results in a strategic edge. The chapter offers practical advice on implementing the chain of blows strategy in different scenarios, urging readers to carefully plan and execute a series of moves to steadily weaken the adversary by strategically applying pressure for long-term success. Overall, Chapter 31 acts as a manual for recognizing the strategic significance of delivering calculated blows in succession, highlighting how the strategic application of sustained pressure can serve as a potent tool in various arenas of conflict and competition. Chapter 32 The Invisibility Strategy, Certainly in Chapter 32 of The 33 Strategies of War by Robert Greene, titled The Feigned Madness Strategy, Greene delves into the concept of assuming the guise of madness or irrationality in order to perplex and disarm adversaries. The chapter underscores the strategic benefit of employing feigned madness as a psychological maneuver. Green draws upon historical instances to exemplify how accomplished leaders and military strategists executed the feigned madness strategy, highlighting the potency of appearing capricious and unorthodox to disrupt the expectations of opponents. The objective is to sow confusion and instill doubt in the minds of adversaries regarding one's true intentions. Practical guidance is offered on how to implement the feigned madness strategy in diverse scenarios. Readers are encouraged to grasp the psychological impact of adopting an unconventional facade, strategically utilizing feigned madness to attain a psychological edge. All in all, Chapter 32 serves as a manual for comprehending the tactical significance of feigned madness demonstrating how the strategic deployment of unconventional behavior can be a formidable tool in various arenas of conflict and competition. Chapter 33 The Theatricality Strategy 
in Chapter 33 of the book, The 33 Strategies of War, by Robert Greene, titled The Retraction Strategy, Green delves into the concept of strategic withdrawal and retraction to pave the way for future opportunities. The chapter underscores the significance of discerning when to pull back, regroup, and strategically retreat from specific confrontations. Green references historical instances to demonstrate how effective leaders and military figures implemented the retraction strategy highlighting the effectiveness of stepping back strategically to conserve resources, evaluate circumstances, and prepare for forthcoming triumphs. The objective is to create room for a more favorable position in the grand scheme of things. The chapter offers practical advice on how to implement the retraction strategy in diverse scenarios. Readers are urged to identify instances where a temporary withdrawal can lead to enduring strategic benefits, underscoring the importance of timing and calculated retreats. In essence, Chapter 33 acts as a manual for grasping the tactical significance of strategic withdrawal, illustrating how the strategic application of retraction can serve as a potent instrument in various domains of conflict and rivalry. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the 33 Strategies of War by Robert Greene. If you enjoyed this summary, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and share your thoughts in the comments below. Until next time.